Hello, my name is Bobby Schultz, and I'm an undergraduate at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, studying electrical engineering and computer science. Now, previously I had talked about pull-up and pull-down resistors, and it occurred to me that I should probably go into some detail and explain what this actually is and what it does, rather than just referencing it. So, first let's talk about what these are. What a pull-up or a pull-down resistor is, is something that is going to take a line, you know, an electrical line, and pull it either high or low. Now, what that means is that you're going to have a line that is connected with, say, a switch, something along that nature, and is going to be floating at a certain point. And we don't want a line to float anywhere. We really never want that in a circuit because it's an unknown. We want to know everything about our circuit. And if a line is floating around, we don't know what that is, and that's a bad thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to drive it high or low. Now, there's a way that you do this such that, because, of course, we can't just connect a line high. All right, because then, of course, if you want to drive that line low at some point, we're going to have a short circuit, which is very bad. So let's let's draw up this situation a little bit. So um, here we have, uh, say, a signal. All right, and that's going to be from a switch. So we have plus five volts here, and now that's going to be at this side of a switch. And then we're just going to draw a switch here. Um, and this is what's going to be called an SPST switch, and this is where this is important. So what SPST means is single pole, which means it only has one line here, and single throw, it only goes to one place. So that means that in a situation like this, so we have 5 volts here, now this line out here is not connected to anything. This is what's called floating. So this is going to be somewhere between 0 and 5 volts. Um, because that's the range that we're working in. We have no idea what this is at. And say we want to sense what this is, say with something like an Arduino on the other end or whatever, we talked about using pull-up and pull-down resistors recently using MOSFETs as well on the uh, gate line of a MOSFET. But something out here, you know, an Arduino, a FET, a what have you. Um, we don't want to not know what this is because we want to control this and say we're sensing whether or not this switch is pressed or not for a program. This is a digital read on an Arduino. Well, a digital read is going to you know, either be high or low in this range. So this could result in some very bad things. So how do we fix this? Well, we can use a pull-up or a pull-down resistor. In this case, because we have five volts here, we're gonna use a pull-down resistor. Now what that means is this. We're gonna take a resistor right here and we're going to put it here. Now this is going to be a relatively high value resistor. This is going to go to ground. Um, a common one to be used is say a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Now in the world of resistors this is a pretty high resistance level and the resistance doesn't matter all that much so long as it's sufficiently high. Um, now, so let's look at uh, some examples of a situation here. So we'll have this situation where the line would have been floating. So now we have current flowing uh, somewhere in here. Um, very likely, uh, or sorry, it would actually be in this direction. So we have some, some transient you know, voltage here. Say it's you know, uh, a quarter of a volt or something along those lines. And we have ground down here. So it's going to want to flow across that. And this is going to rectify that because the voltage is going to drop across here. But effectively, once that's discharged, whatever sort of transients is in this wire, basically, then the current will effectively go to zero. So in this case, we have I being equal to zero. And of course, because I is equal to zero, the voltage drop across this resistor is also zero because, of course, V is equal to IR. V, of course, this is Ohm's law, as I'm sure you know. So V is your voltage, so the voltage drop across this resistor, and I is going to be our current, and then R is going to be our resistance. So we have we want to find what the drop is across this resistor, you know, basically what the difference is between ground and this line, because we want the line to go to ground, and we want to make sure that that is true. So this is effectively zero, because this is, you know, this transients has been removed. So, you know, we have our V, is equal to zero times 10,000, which of course is simply zero. So we're correct in that assumption that this line now is pulled to ground appropriately. So that's exactly what we wanted to do. Now, 
let's look at the uh, sort of opposite case of now let's close our switch and see what happens. So now we're going to close this switch. So we push the button. That switch gets closed. Now we have five volts at this rail. And now we want this to be irrelevant. We don't want anything to be messed with this rail. We want to just see five volts now. So will we? Well, let's see. So now our current is going to flow in this direction because it's a higher potential up here. So in that same, same direction along the uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor. And now our voltage up here is five volts and our voltage here is ground. So what we're creating here, and then we have, we're going to assume some kind of, you know, small, uh, effectively nominal load across here, you know, over here that by reading the voltage or by switching the gate, there is some very low uh, load of a milliamp or two, something like that, what we really don't care about. Um, so what we're creating here is what's called a current divider. That means that this five volt um, line from our switch is going to supply current, some, some amount of current. And that current, some of it is going to go over here and some of it's going to go down here through our resistor. Now the question is, is this really going to affect us very much having this resistor here? Well, let's see. So if we work out the calculations, we'll see that the voltage across this resistor is going to be five volts. So we'll get that five volts is equal to our current times our resistance, which is 10,000. And I'm not all that great at math, but I've worked these numbers out beforehand and it comes out to 0.5 milliamps. So a very small amount, um, effectively nothing. And what that means is that having this resistor here is going to uh, be effectively irrelevant for when we have this you know, positive uh, voltage up here. So this does exactly what we want. It's going to pull it low when it's floating and it's going to do nothing when we have a high signal here. So now we're going to see a very nice either binary plus five or zero volts on this line based on whether or not the switch is pressed. There's no floating, nothing along those lines. So now let's look at the same sort of idea, but with a pull up resistor, but this is the exact same sort of idea, except in this case, we're going to have is this. So we have our same switch here like that, except now rather than this being five volts, this is ground. And now we'll go out here and we'll connect once again to our, you know, whatever output we want to have, our Arduino, our FET, what have you. And now rather than simply letting this line float, we're going to pull it up. So that's our poorly drawn pull up resistor. Um, so that's our plus five volts, and this is once again going to be our 10 uh, kilo ohm resistor. And now let's look at, uh, again, the same sort of example. So right now when this line is floating, once again, we're going to have a nominal you know, uh, voltage here, but it's going to be less than five volts, so our current is actually going to flow in this direction this time, but our I is still going to be equal to zero because very quickly this transient is going to be rectified. So there will be a very, very, very short time when I is not equal to zero, but we're gonna ignore, ignore that for right now. So we're gonna say that, you know, for the max amount of time, I is going to be equal to zero. So once again, I is equal to zero, and for that same reason, the voltage is equal to zero, and therefore this line is going to be at plus five. Now let's look at the other case, where when this switch is closed, so we're going to close this switch. This line is now connected to ground. So let's get rid of this. And once again, we're going to have a current divider. We're going to have, however, the current dividing is going to work a little bit differently. We're going to have current here, which we're going to have some go there and some go there. Now, will this affect our line? Well, let's see. So we have, we want to see what the drop across this is going to be because we want it to be five volts because if it's not, then this line is at some other value. So what we end up seeing is once again, we're going to call this draw irrelevant so that um, this I is equal to, you know, effectively zero, you know, so we're going to call that approximately zero. 
and therefore we're going to discount it. Well, then we just end up with a simple circuit. Then we just can rewrite this as this, once that switch is closed. This being a 10K resistor, and this being plus five volts. Now, of course, from this we can see that all because of uh, Kirchhoff's law, all of the voltage has to drop across this resistor, meaning that, yes, this line will go to ground. Now, what is our current going to look like? Well, once again, we have V is equal to IR, where V is five volts, and our I is an unknown, and our resistance is once again 10 kilo ohms, and once again, we get 0.5 milliamps. So again, a very, very small amount of current is going to flow through here. So we have the same result, which is what we wanted of that when our switch is open, we have this line now going to five volts, and when our switch is closed, this line is going to go to ground, exactly as we wanted. So these are an example of a pull up and a pull down resistor, just to sort of justify the math behind it, because I know in the first time I saw this, I had to think about it for a minute and realize that, yes, in fact, it does work. So I want to show the math behind it and justify why we're using these, and then show the circuit in more depth of how it actually looks. So I hope this is helpful, and I hope that this will help you understand and use pull-up and pull-down resistors in the future for signals or transistors or what have you. So I hope this has been useful, and I hope you can utilize this in the future.